All right, in this video, we're going to look at how we multiply polynomials. So we're going to get, uh, begin with a monomial times a monomial. Um, we're going to multiply the coefficients. That's the numbers out front, the 7 and the 6 here. And we're going to add the exponents of like bases. So notice x and x to the fifth both have a base of x. And we add the exponents. It's 1 here, or understood to be 1 plus 5. We'll get x to the sixth. So I just want to look at that. So basically, if you have x squared times x cubed, we call this the product rule because we're multiplying two powers of x, or two powers of some base. And I just said we add the exponents. So does that make sense to you that we would do that? Well, think of it this way. x squared means multiply two x's x cubed means multiply three x's, so if you multiply those together you have a total of five. So it doesn't take long to see that the pattern is we just need to add the exponents. And so that's what we're doing here, and again this is called the product rule. Alright, so let's go ahead and do this one here. Now if you wanted to, the, th the nice thing about multiplication is order doesn't matter. Three times four, is the same as 4 times 3. You could put your 7 first, and then your 6, and then your x to the first, and your x to the fifth, and you would get 42x to the sixth. We don't normally change the order, but that's certainly something that you can do. We normally just do it just as we look at them here. We'll multiply the numbers together. We get negative 36. And b squared times b to the 7th, we'll add 2 and 7, and we get b to the 9th. And again, if you're multiplying 2 b's that are multiplied times 7 b's that are multiplied, then you have a total of 9 b's that are multiplied. So that's the basic idea. So again, we've done this before, but we're, do, we're making it a little more formal, and we'll run into some problems that are a little bit more challenging than what, we, what we've done before. So next we'll look at a monomial times a polyno polynomial, specifically a binomial or a trinomial are the most common. Notice here we have a monomial times a binomial, and this is just where we use the distributed property, which we've talked about. 3x times 2x is 6x squared. Be careful with the x. You're multiplying x times x. 2x is multiplied means x squared. And then 3x times 4. Well, think about this. 3x times 4. The only thing that we can combine together is the 3 times the 4. And so this would become, and it is positive times a positive, so it'll be plus 12x. We can multiply the 3 with the 4. All right, so I would encourage you to try the other two and then watch the video. All right, so let's see how you did here. So 4 times 3 is 12, and x to the first times x cubed is x to the fourth. When we multiply here, we have 4 times negative 2. That's going to be a minus 8. x times x is x squared. And then don't forget, you still have that y there. And then... We're going to have a plus next, because we have a positive times a positive. 4 times 3 is 12, and we've got an x times y squared. All right, let's see how you did on the last one here. You should get negative 12a to the fourth b plus 4a cubed b. Minus 8 a squared b squared. A times a is a squared. B times b is b squared. And finally, when you multiply times a minus 3, a negative times a negative, we're going to get a plus 6ab. All right, let's move on to binomial times a binomial. So notice I said use FOIL, you may recall. In the word FOIL, this is an acronym, F stands for first, O stands for outer, I stands for inner, and L stands for last. 
And so this helps us to know how to multiply a binomial times a binomial. We multiply the first terms. In this binomial, that would be x. And in this binomial, that would also be x. We get x squared. We multiply the outer terms. That's the ones on the outside. x times a minus 3. That's going to give us negative 3x. We multiply the inner terms, the ones on the inside, so that would be 6x, positive 6x, so plus 6x. And finally, we multiply the last terms. This is the last term of the first binomial. This is the last term of the second. 6 times a negative 3, that's negative 18. We'll write minus 18. And so we get x squared plus 3x minus 18. All right, we'll do one more together, and then I'll, have you, I'll let you guys go from there. 3x times 2x, that would be 6x squared. 3x times a minus 10, that's minus 30x. We've got 7 times 2x, that's 14x. And finally, 7 times a negative 10 is negative 70. We'll write minus 70. So we, again, we have these middle terms that are like terms. We're going to end up with the trinomial 6x squared, negative 30 and 14, that's minus 16x, minus 70. So I want you to notice, we can think of this multiplication in terms of FOIL, but the other way to notice is, or to, to note, or to see, is this first term is just distributed times the two terms here, and then the 7 is distributed times each of the two terms. So that's going to help us later on. So just another way to think of the same multiplication. So let's go ahead and multiply these other ones out. You get 21x squared minus 14xy minus 30xy plus 20y squared. So these two middle terms 14, minus a 14xy and another minus 30xy. That's going to be 21x squared minus 44xy plus 20y squared. All right, so here we have 6x squared minus 8x. Our inner product is minus 18x, and our last product is plus 24. So we'll end up with 6x squared minus 26x plus 24. Now don't notice on this last one we get x to the 6, x cubed times x cubed. Whoops. And... Um, and then x cubed times a plus 4, or positive 4, that's 4x cubed. Our inner product will be minus 3x cubed. And our last product, negative 3 times 4, we get negative 12, we'll write minus 12. So we'll end up with x to the 6th. 4x cubed minus 3x cubed is going to be plus 1x cubed. And then minus 12. All right, what about a binomial times a polynomial, in particular, a trinomial? Notice it says distribute first through the poly, then distribute second term through the poly. Uh, I think we need to fix that one there. We're basically just distributing the A. I guess that's what it's saying. Distribute the a times the trinomial here. So we'll have a cubed plus 4a squared plus 16a. And then we're going to distribute the negative 4. Now I'm going to put these in rows where you have your common or your like terms in the same row. So minus 4a squared will go here. Negative 4 times 4a, that'll be a minus 16a. And negative 4 times 16 is negative 64. We'll write minus 64 there. Oops. And when you combine your like terms, you're going to get a cubed 
And notice these guys cancel out and you're just left with a cubed minus 64. So it turns out this is a special case we'll talk about uh, when we get into factoring. This is what we call a difference of cubes. a cubed is, of course, a to the third power. And 64 is 4 cubed, or 4 to the third power. So we call that a difference of cubes. Uh, subtraction problems, we call that a difference. All right, so try number 12 if you haven't already, and then you can check your answer. So a times a squared is a cubed. a times ab, that's going to be plus a squared b. And a times b squared, that'll be plus a b squared. And then we'll multiply or distribute the negative b times each of the three terms. Now notice a minus b times a squared I want to write that in alphabetical order, just like these are in alphabetical order. And so we're going to have a minus a squared b. That's going to go here. And then here we're going to get a minus a b squared. And finally, a minus b times b squared is a minus b cubed. We'll get a cubed minus b cubed. And these just happen to both be special cases. Uh, this doesn't normally happen. You'll, I think you'll run into at least one where you won't get everything to fall out like they did here, but you just combine your like terms. All right, let's move on to the next page, our last page. So we're going to talk about what we sometimes call special products or these are like special cases, these next two. So first of all, notice if you have, what it's saying here is you have the same terms. The only thing different is the, the signs in the middle. Here we have a plus and here we have a minus. So let's say this is equal to a squared minus b squared. Let's just go ahead and FOIL this out. We get x squared minus 5x plus 5x, and a minus 25. Well, these guys add up to 0, and you're just left with x squared minus 25. Notice this would be what we call a difference of squares. We just looked at a difference of cubes. So anytime you have the same terms in both position, but opposite signs, this is going to happen. In fact, the outer product and the inner product in this situation are going to add up to zero. And so you literally could have just multiplied the x's and multiplied the fives with opposite signs. You get minus 25 and you'd be done for, for these two because we have that same pattern. So here, this time I'll go ahead and do FOIL, but we don't really have to do the inner and outer product. This will be 25x squared Notice our outer product is 10x and our inner product is minus 10x. So that's what we were just talking about. Those guys cancel each other out. And negative 2 times 2, that's going to give us minus 4. So we end up with 25x squared minus 4. The inner and outer product, because they add up to 0, don't really need to do them in a case like this. So in this last problem, we have the same thing, same terms, opposite signs. So this will be 16x to the 4th minus 9y squared. And we're done. All right. Now you can maybe look at this later. There, there's a pattern here that's going on. But the first thing I want to talk about is how students really struggle with this problem because they want to just square the x and square the 9. Now, if you had 9x squared, you could square the 9 and square the x. And that would be 81x squared. And this is actually a property that, that we have. If you have the square root of xy, basically you just square each of these separately. And so that's a property of exponents. There is no property of exponents for these types of problems. You just need to remember what that 2 means. You know, let me brighten this up. Just There we go. 
Um, this 2 tells me to multiply 2x plus 9s. And then we're just going to FOIL. So as long as you remember that this is just um, a matter of multiplying two of these x plus 9s, or that you can do the same type of thing here, you should be fine. Excuse me. I'm getting tired here. Let's see. So x times x is x squared. And then x times 9, that's 9x. And we have another 9x. And finally, 9 times 9 is 81. So these guys, we're going to end up with x squared plus 18x, because these guys are like terms. We get x squared plus 18x plus 81. And again, there is a pattern going on here. And if you see the pattern, great, but you can always just FOIL. But notice this x squared is just coming from squaring the x, and the 81 is from squaring the 9. How about the 18x? Oh, excuse me. We just multiply 9 times x and double it. Notice we added two 9x terms. And so that's the pattern. But again, I'm just going to go ahead and FOIL these. If you see the pattern, great. So when we multiply the first terms, we get 25y squared. The outer terms, we get a minus 20y. Same thing for the inner terms, which is always going to happen in these types of problems. And then negative 4 times negative 4, that's going to give us a plus 16. We end up with 25y squared minus 40y plus 16. All right, on number 18, we have a cubed plus 3, quantity squared. We'll multiply 2 of these a4 plus a to the 4th plus 3 binomials. So we're going to get a to the 4th times a to the 4th, which is a to the 8th. And then we'll have plus 3 a to the 4th and one more of those. And then 3 times 3 is 9. So we end up with a to the 8th plus 6a to the 4th plus 9. All right. Well, we're down to the last two problems. A little more challenging. Um, you might want to try these and then see how you did. All right, let's look at these. So notice these are like the ones we did up here, the special case where you have the same numbers with opposite signs, this is just going to be x squared minus 9 when you multiply that out. But notice you still have this other x squared plus 9. In fact, aren't these the same terms with opposite signs? So we can do x squared times x squared, which is x to the fourth. And then we know all we have to do is multiply negative 9 times 9. We get minus 81. Now if you FOIL it out, you're just going to end up um, you're combining your inner and outer product to be 0, and you'll end up with what we have here. All right. Now, on number 20, think about how many terms you're going to have when you multiply all this out. We're going to have to do what similar to what we did way back here, where we had a binomial times a trinomial, and we had to multiply each of these terms times all three of these. In this case, we're actually going to have to do that. Uh, let's see. Three times. So we have to do x squared times x squared, 2x, and 1. Then we'll do the same thing with x, and then the same thing with the minus 2. So when we multiply x squared times x squared, we get x to the fourth x squared times 2x is going to give us a plus 2x cubed. And x squared times 1, that's just x squared. We'll multiply x times x squared here, and we'll get x cubed. We'll put that in our cubed column. Let's do x times 2x. That's 2x squared. That's going to go in our x squared column. And, of course, x times 1, that's going to be plus x. So finally, we've got to distribute this negative 2. It'll be negative 2 times x squared, which is a minus 2x squared. 
we have negative 2 times 2x, which is negative 4x, or minus 4x. And finally, we have negative 2 times 1, and that will give us minus 2. So we end up with x to the 4th plus 3x cubed. These guys add up to 0. We're left with plus x squared. A minus 4 and a plus 1, that's minus 3x, and a minus 2. Alright, so that's going to be it for this video.